guess we're going. Um, today, I wanted to talk about um, another particle system that's a bit different than what we had before, and that's the particle flow. So it's more of a node-based kind of operator, so it has a lot of more, a lot of other functions available to it, so let's just look at it and see what we can do with it. So it's the PF source um, icon or button that you see in the particle systems. You can also create it from the create menu and under particles and particle flow source. So PF stands for particle flow. So there we go. And you can just place it anywhere in the scene. I'll lift it up. Not that it, well, yeah. So it's already animated. It, it just emits. It's just like a regular emitter, but it does have quite a bit of um, control that, that the others don't. Okay. So for instance, if you hit 6 on the keyboard, that'll pull up the particle view, which is the node-based editing uh, for that particle flow. Um, so to explain the settings there, yeah, we're good. So to explain these settings, um, basically we have the particles being rendered, um, and this is the first event is going to be it has a bunch of uh, sub events or or um, or, or uh, items in it. <laughs> I don't know what else you call them. So it has a birth, and so if I can click on um, any of these, you can um, see on the right side the parameters for those for these uh, different um, options. Okay, so as far as the birth goes right now, it's starting at zero, going to 30, and there's 200 of them. So those can be changed, of course. The position will be um, on the, uh, basically emitting from the emitter um, based on a volume. But um, down here in the depot, you have some other options, right? So we can actually make that quite a bit bigger and you can scroll scroll through these different options we, there's no way to go over them all I guess there is a way but we're not going to do that so instead of um, let's say uh, we use a teapot or something uh, yeah teapot we'll just put a teapot out in this scene here and let's say instead of uh, emitting from the emitter um, that position, I can use. Let's let's see if what else we can use. Um, there should be like a position object. Yeah, here we go. So I can just drag that and pop it on top of to replace it or add to it if I go in between any of these other items, right? So I can just I'll just drop that on top of the position icon and change it into a position object. If I select that, you get the objects. Uh, parameters over here and so I'm going to add the teapot as the emitter for this particle flow. So in just those steps, can I make that a little bit smaller? Yeah, in just those steps we've changed the emission from the emitter, right? Put that back down the floor to the teapot. Okay, um, so easy enough, right? Does that make sense, what's happening? Yeah, yeah, so we haven't even gotten to, right, but good point, we haven't even gotten to the type of particles, which is similar to what we've done before is making the particles different shapes and things like that. Different objects or we can use the basic shapes. So we'll go, yeah, we'll, we'll talk about that. So as far as this object positioning goes, um, there's a couple other things. Right now it's being emitted from the surface. Um, there's, what other choices do you have? Um, the pivot point, all the vertices, which would be much more uniform, especially for like spheres and well, the teapot's slightly less uniform, I suppose. Um, surface is usually the um, good one to use. Okay, what about um, do, 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 
Um, it can inherit the movement, right? So if I animate the teapot doing something, then the particles will move with it. We'll get that motion as well. So that's nice. Um, how about speed? Right now, it is along the icon arrow. Um, what else do we have? Icon center out. Um, so our icon becomes the teapot. So maybe the center out or random 3D would work pretty well for this one, just to have particles flying off of it. Or, um, well, let's just try the random 3D and see what we get. So now the particles are being uh, created at the surface of the teapot and their direction and speed, well, the speed is not random, it's, it's uh, 300 millimeters per frame, but the um, direction is random. Is that all right? So far so good? A lot of times we would want the particles to maybe just be all created at the same frame, perhaps at zero, or let's just, yeah, let's say zero. We'll keep it at 200 for now. And so the particles are already created and um, instead of having a speed of 300, I could just delete that speed. Um, my, uh, there's a word for it I'm not thinking of, but anyway, I'll, I'll remove that speed and use a force, right? So we can use wind or an explosion or any of these other forces here. So let's look at some of the forces that we have. A push, a vortex, a P-bomb. Um, actually, um, well, what if we use a deflector? This is an interesting concept, maybe. Um, how about just a regular deflector? And I'll put it underneath the teapot. Maybe make it a little bit bigger. OK. Does the deflector have to match the same size? No, no. Um, you can, right, good question. You, you can make it as big as you want. In my case, I just want it to hit all the particles because I'm going to animate. My, my idea here is just animate the, the, the deflector to, to hit the particles off the teapot. I can knock them off like it's trying to clean them or something or whatever. Okay. So in this case, I need to put a collision um, interaction with the, uh, with, for the particles, right? And so these are all the yellow um, icons, right? So um, operators, that's the word I was looking for. So all these <laughs> operators down here, um, I, you know, collision spawn comes to mind where these particles could be like, very small and when they hit they could become something else right they can make more um, a regular collision would still be okay because it could just bounce the particles up let's just use a collision to start with so I'm gonna put a collision test these all these yellow ones are tests for for things that are happening so I'm gonna put this at the bottom ish part here and notice there's a node on the left of that. So upon a collision, I could have it go do something or just have it collide. But first of all, I have to add a deflector, right? So just like I had to add the object itself. Okay. So now that deflector is, is interacting with those or can interact with these particles. And if I just slide the time, it should, well, I don't have speed anymore. I took that out. Question? Um, for the two that you do have right now for um, D, F, select one? Yep. That's uh, the geometry node, right? For render? This, yeah, it'll, it, this causes it to render. Okay. Um, this, these are the events and the operators that, that define what happens to the particles. Okay. Is that, did that answer your question maybe? 
Uh, so the most the last one what happened. <laughs> I got uh, up until this point right here. Okay. So all I've done so far was take out the speed operator because I wanted the collision to do something else. So what's that big one called right there? The one with the whole event panel on? Yeah, that's, that's the event. <laughs> it's, a, it's an event, right? Okay. And so anything I add to this event happens in that event. And we can spawn off different events. Like upon that collision, we could have it do something else. Okay. We could have something else happen. Um, good. Let's try. What else are we going to try? Oh, yeah, I was going to animate. Um, let's just uh, animate this. Um, let me turn that off. And I'll start this slightly below. And I'll do this somewhat slowly, maybe in two seconds. I'll turn on auto key and just raise that collider or the collision um, up across these particles. Okay, that's it. All right, at this point, I uh, have the um, deflector being animated through the through the time frame, zero to 60 frames, I mean. And as they hit the particles, the particles are, are scraped off of the surface of the teapot. We can randomize, I think, the, um, the, the bounce characteristics. Maybe put a 50% difference on that. Um, add some chaos to it. Let's see if that makes any difference. So they're spread out just a little bit better. So good enough so far. Go back, hit six on the keyboard, and um, we'll add some more things. Let's replace. It doesn't make a whole lot of sense. I mean, there are more things you can do on a collision. You can delete just part. There's a delete uh, operator here that we can use to reduce the number of particles. I don't see a reason really to do that, but um, something you can do is just put this delete event, so we can make a new event just by adding that delete, and then we can uh, run that, um, the output of the collision to, to, the, um, to the new event, right? So right now it's deleting all, so as I scrub my time, now the particles are just being deleted as they hit the, the deflector. So we could have, yeah, so that, that, you know, that might be something <laughs> you'd want to do if, you know, if you want to do it that way. Or you could just delete a few of them, right? So um, it could look like you're, you're trying to scrub that off or something and um, just delete um, what by age. All particles, selected particles only. Maybe. I thought I could put, maybe there's a different. That might help. Um, the lifespan. We could give it 10 frames. Let's see what that does with a variation of 10. All right, let's see what that does. So instead of deleting them all, when it hits the collider, it's going to delete them by their age, right? So there's, they'll bounce, um, but, but they're, they're marked for deletion <laughs> at, at, at 10 frames, I guess, from, from as far as their age goes. So it won't take long for them to die off, right? So uh, let's see. Yeah, by 10 frames, there's a couple of them might have bounced. It doesn't even look like they did. Let's give them a bigger lifespan here.
Yeah, too much variation probably. Yeah, so yeah, here they're bouncing a little bit, um, but dying off pretty quickly. So. What if I added a speed as it, yeah, what if I do this? Give it a speed and random. And we'll leave it at that with some variation, I suppose, um, with 100 millimeters per frame variation, right? So at this point, if they hit the deflector, they should get a speed, a random direction of the speed, and um, die in a few frames, right? So they'll, they'll bounce off and go away, as, as that is. So let's see what we can do with that. So they're going pretty fast. <laughs> so maybe I could, I don't know, that's not too bad, but I'll slow that down just a bit. So maybe 150 and variation of 50. It's a little bit slower so they don't go too far. Yeah. Good enough. Um, maybe. Um, I'd want the particles to be affected by gravity or something like that as well. That can be added in by just adding a force um, to, I don't think it matters if I put it before or after the collision, but I'll add a gravity force to the scene. And I'll add that to that operator. Make sure that that operator adds the gravity. So this is similar to using the bind to space warp tool to bind a particle system to a gravity. Um, but you, you can do that as, as a node-based operator instead, or events, operators in the events. So those should start falling, but the deflector is moving at the same time. So they work okay. Yeah, they fall pretty quickly. It does look like they're going through the deflector at that point. Oh, and that is because they're falling before. Well, no. Let's put this up here. Seems. Oh yeah, the speed is, is passing them through the collider. I mean, at, as they collide, they speed off in, in random directions. So that makes sense. Anyway, quick um, settings there. What if, is that right though? Any questions about that so far? Um, I'm not getting the um, explosion portion. Okay, okay. So what I did in this event, right, so it when it hits that deflector, okay, it sends it to this event in which I have a speed operator. Did you get that? Yeah, I just didn't get the deflector portion of all the... <clears throat> oh, all right. So over here, we want to make sure that the collision includes that deflector as part of it. Add in the deflector. Um, you click add and click on the deflector. But you have to have a deflector in the scene too. So that's in the space warps and under deflectors in, in the create panel. So good questions. Thanks. Right. Yep. And that goes under the force, right? So um, with this force operator, I added the gravity to it. 
So it's in that list. Yeah. And even the label will tell you what what operator, uh, what force or deflector is in the, is associated with that operator. And where would you find a, the particle in there? Oh, that is in, well, two ways, two ways. Uh, you can go to create particles, PF source, particle flow source. What if we change our collision to a collision spawn? So the collision can pass, like if a particle hits that deflector, it, it will do whatsoever, whatever's in this next event, right? So let's, let's adjust that a little bit and make it a collision spawn, meaning that when it collides, it will, it will create more particles. So that's fun too. So I'll replace the original collision with a collision spawn. Okay, and under that we can um, add the deflector that is supposed to hit if it, if it passes the test, basically. So add, and we'll click on that deflector. Okay, um, the collision spawn should, like, spawn other particles, right? So this event, I don't know that we need it now. Let's just delete and start fresh. Okay, so in this collision spawn, we can send it out to another um, birth operator, or I wonder if we can just do um, an instance. Probably that's going to be easier. So um, shape instance. I think that's just a, let's see what I have in that. Yeah. So in this case, we can use different shapes, but um, let's connect them. And I'm not going to delete them. They're just going to use a bounce, whatever bounciness the deflector has, and it's going to be another object, right? So let's say, what kind of object do we want? Torus knot. Those are fun, right? So I can create like smaller torus knots over here. It's still a little big, so maybe I'm sorry, what? How do you make it small? Yeah. Yeah. Good, good. We'll just leave it like that, just so we can see it, right? Um, so as far as the particle geometry, we can click on none, the none button, and click on the torus knot, and it should give it that name in, in that button. Okay. And we can set the scale. Um, we could even scale it down a little bit more, like 50% with a variation of 50%. <laughs> so it can go down to 25% or 75%. I, I would think 50% and 50%, right? All right. And we don't need to separate the particles for that, so. Um, See what this looks like. Again, I can't really tell. Now I'm not getting any particles going through it because I, I'm passing that through it. But I should be able to see those particles rendered out as little torus knots. That'd be a good shape for SpaghettiOs. Anyway. There we go. 
So probably we don't want, you know, torus knots or whatever, but that, that works okay, I suppose. How did you get the torus knots to actually connect with the particles? Oh, yeah, good question. Right here with this event, so this event was not here, right? So we just added a collision spawn. So I used a shape instance, and I dragged it out to a blank part of the screen to make a separate event for it. And then I joined that output of the collision spawn to the input of that event. And then under shape instance, I used, I click on it, and then click the none, and then you can click on the, the torus knot as the object that it becomes. Yet, the, the, it'll still be displayed as ticks, right? Mm -hmm. Of course, you can change that to, I don't know, dots or circles or something. So now there's circles. Good. There's many other things, maybe just one more to talk about before we, this is getting kind of long and wants you to kind of work on your own kind of stuff. So what about speed by icon? That's a good one. So how about when it collides with that deflector, I want it to do something else, right? So speed by icon. So there'll be torus knots, but this time they're going to follow this um, icon speed. And so by doing that, let me close that. I have this icon over here. So what if I, gee, I don't know, make that move, right? So the particles move with it. Okay, so I think even if I do it now, it'll, well, maybe not. Yeah, they're not moving yet, right? So how about um, I use my top view and create a motion for this um, position icon. And maybe I want it to follow a path. How about a helix, a heliacal path? Actually, I like a line better. And we can create a line, a, a kind of a spiral helix like that also. Let's just try that. And um, so I just kind of have a spiral-ish looking line. And if you want to work on it more, you can certainly go to vertex mode and edit, edit, edit your particles a bit or edit your vertices to make it look a little better. In addition, I would want to give it some elevation, right? So I'll lift these particles up in a fun way, smooth way, perhaps. Oh, got one more. Make that kind of fall along. That looks sort of smooth, I suppose. Right? And then, adding a path constraint to that particle, so I select my position icon and choose, go to the motion panel, right? And assign controller to the position, path constraint. We're good with that, there's a lot of clicking, but motion panel, <laughs> position, assign controller, button, path constraint, okay. And then we add the path, we're clicking, and we click on the path. So now, um, it's already animated, right? And then the particles are fall, fly, uh, following along, right? There should be some variation on that. So 
let's go back to the part of flow. Speed by icon, and maybe I could lower the influence a little bit. Maybe to 80. Oh yeah, use icon orientation and have it bank uh, or follow at least. I don't have to bank it. Maybe banking would be fine too. So now the, the position icon is following the curvature of the path and uh, banking with it. So that should affect the particles a little bit and I've lowered the influence a little bit so they can trail a little bit more. And uh, that should be okay. Uh, let's see what that does. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's nice. <laughs> it really twists over here, but that's fun. Yeah, maybe I don't want it to bank. <laughs> let's turn off that banking. That's a little better. Nice little tail. Of course, you can you can adjust those settings anytime you want. Okay, uh, fair enough. Good enough to get us started. What I would, well, what, what it would be neat also is to, um, well, I'll leave it at that. We'll, we'll be good that far. I'll let you kind of work on your own stuff. We'll, we'll talk about more stuff later, but. Okay, so the question is, uh, I want my particles to emit light. Right, so that's a material that can be added to the particles, right? So um, I probably want to select my particles first. So H on the keyboard and I look for PF source. Um, well, actually, I want the PF source event two particles as my, uh, what I have selected, okay? Now I can go to my material editor and just add a physical material with the Arnold renderer um, the physical material allows you to emit light right inside of it, right? So under here, emission, and let's say I want a soft yellow. Um, soft yellowish light. So at that point, I don't have much to reflect off of that, but let's see what it looks like. Let's scrub the time down a little bit. Put some of that in front. Oh, um, and so I don't get anything, right? <laughs> so that needs to have a material in here. And there is a material. Um, there are two kinds. There's a dynamic material as well as a static one. In this case, uh, didn't, I, didn't, I don't need um, anything but a static material for this if it's just going to glow. So I'll add a material static to these particles. And I'll assign the material. If I click the None button, I should be able to see it. Well, oh, I didn't add it anyway. Um, yeah, let's hit M. And right click Assign Material to Selection. That might just do it. I don't know. Doesn't look like it. So let's see if I put it. There we go. Scene, now it's a scene material anyway, so okay. And let's try that. A bit bright, so we can knock down that uh, emission okay, but there's a... That's where the, the particles can emit light. So, yeah, good question. And um, you may want to lower that um, exposure and emission on that. 